Bishop, good afternoon. Yes, sir. sir. How are you doing, sir? Good afternoon. Good morning. It's morning, my time. I'm doing well. It's <laughs> evening, our time. We're happy to have you. And I would like to welcome Bishop Maponga. Good evening, my honorable sir. My brother. My Bishop, brother from the other you? mother. <laughs> okay, my brother. Bishop, I think, allow me to start with the first topic amongst the three that we're discussing. One of them is, when you look at an African in Africa, and you look at an African-American, you have, you have to ask the question of, what informs the idea that an African American is a better version of a black, of an African, when we are all from the same epicenter? We've moved from community to individual. We've moved from um, cooperation to competition. We've moved from the great we to this damn I. And as a result, blacks bash blacks easier. But we are quick to sub to be to to to, to subdue, support. Mm. We are quick to find some form of endorsement when we are approved by anything but us or anyone but us. And at the end of this conversation, we need to be able to ask ourselves why do we not have the capacity to implement what we think we are of ourselves? Because talking about it is not going to help. Mm. Do we even have the capacity to resuscitate the true identity of Africanism mm. and take charge? Bishop? Well, it's a multi-layered question. I think that much of it is a psychological debilitation that comes from being enslaved. Yeah. You see, and, and, and apartheid, I guess it's the same thing. Uh, uh, the only difference is that you were in your own country and we were taken from the country of course, of our origin, okay? One of the things I noted is that there's a tendency for African-Americans, particularly to be put down by the dominant culture, as opposed to people who are foreign, who are black, even though we all came from, as you indicated quite well, the same epicenter. When I came from Jamaica and uh, the attitude towards Jamaicans was different than the attitude towards African-Americans. Mm. And it's really interesting because I would say to them, to the dominant culture, well, we came from the same center. The boat just dropped some off in Jamaica, Trinidad, uh, Tobago, and uh, uh, Barbados. Correct. And the other boat came all the way to the Carolinas and to Louisiana. So what really is the difference? Well, the attitude is that you have not been enslaved under their regime. That's the disposition that they seem to extend to me. So consequently, in order for you to have uh, uh, 40 million controlled by 3 million, mm. in order for there to be any control in America of slaves and anywhere else in the world, what you have to do is you have to divide and conquer. So you end up with the house slave, you end up with the field slave, you end up with the attitude of the house slave feeling more significant than the field slave. So really what happens is, that because each slave is striving or each black person is striving to be accepted in a white world, they lose their identity and give up their identity. It was said that if Martin Luther King were here today and he saw what integration did, then he probably mm. would have allowed segregation. Oh, when we were segregated, oh. we had more dependence on each other, more reliance on each other, more more significant importance to corroborate with each other. But at the end of the day, because we're trying so hard yes, to be accepted by the white community, yes. we sell out our brothers and our sisters. Mm. There are people who will not even make any real serious conversation about what the pandemic has done, what the leadership of this country has done, because we have gained a certain amount of wealth and we want to protect it. Mm. Uh, we get really uh, vociferous when a white man is killing a police, is killing a black person or a white and black are shooting each other. It's on right now, really heavy. But none of us really spend a lot of time dealing with black on black crime. Why? Because we're totally divided. We're totally taken away from our community. And when we rise, we rise into the white establishment. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be finished. Yes, sir. When I came to America from Jamaica, there were poor Polish communities, rich Polish, 
communities. There were poor Jewish communities, rich Jewish communities. There were poor Italian communities, rich Italian communities. There were poor Greek communities, rich uh, Greek communities. There were poor black communities and all rich blacks trying to get in everybody else's community. Rich black community. That's Bishop's point. And, 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 and thank you, Bishop. I think you've touched on a couple of layers explaining this pandemic or this crisis, this, this, this serious problem. But Bishop Maponga. And I, and I think to add on what Bishop is saying, yes. critical as it is, we needed to, to be candid and honest that there's no way you can take a black child and then introduce to them a better life across the river. Mm -hmm. There. Mm -hmm. Through media, education, religion, and yes. everything else. And the, the, the strategy is move away from who you are. Mm -hmm. The real good stuff is not here. Okay. The stuff is across there. Okay. So in principle, yeah. it might sound philosophical, I know, but in yeah. principle, yeah. the black child is a tourist. He's a sojourner. Mm -hmm. Quote, unquote, he's an Israelite. Mm -hmm. Moving away from the Egypt of their slavery mm -hmm. into the Canaan of the colonial supremacy okay. that he wants to attain. So by the time he has reached very good, there, very good point. he has nothing to do with where he is coming from. Okay. In fact, how do you know that you've become a coconut? And by coconut, I mean brown on the inside, but the software you're working with is white inside. Okay. It's when you go back to your village, it was, and, and you, can no like sleep, you can no longer sleep on the floor. Mm. The same floor that you slept on when you were young. Yes. You can no longer eat the cold food yes. that you were used to, used to eat yes. when you were five, six years old. Right. Because now you're coming from town, where are the gekings and the olives and the feta cheese in my salad? Is it a reason why when I look myself in the mirror, I want to have long, blonde weave? Is it the reason why when we look ourselves in the mirror, I want to have it was, a it, typical it, it, uh, Oxford accent yeah. look like i'm fresh out of west Manis west minister what, what, what's that area west in london minister. west west, west minister mm. yes mm. yeah is, is it is that is that the reason why Timos, there's nothing as painful as seeing a black child crying over a white door spending all their infancy brushing white hair hmm. nice two-year-old kid three-year-old kid but there's ba black barbie she's now. breastfeeding yeah a white doll yeah. Bathing a white door. Was so, it systematic? Was it designed? It's commercial. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you can introduce this kind of a mindset yes. to a young child, you can harvest their resources mm -hmm. when they are mature. Mm -hmm. Because the mind is already damaged at infancy. You can only go to the shop and now create the same image, but this time it's no longer a door. It's a blonde wig. Don't get me preaching now. Okay. Train up a child. We, yes, can, we want to, to spiritualize that verse which yes. is very, very interesting. Turn up a child because introduce them to Christianity, introduce them to Jesus and etc. When they are old, they will not depart from it. But let's look at the flip side. Okay. Train up a child on what is fashion. Train up a child on what is the ideal person. Train up a child on what is the language they must use and what materials they must gather around themselves. Mm. And when they are grown up, they will not depart from it. I think ignorance of African people is a business on its own. And I say that because you look at how the secular culture commercialized the ignorance or capitalized on the ignorance of Africans. One, people are still debating if a traditional wedding is complete. And women, I mean, it's a beautiful thing to see yourself in a white dress, but in African culture, we used to just go to a wedding where there's no need for a white wedding, where it's two families slaughter, and that seals the deal traditionally. But we escalated, and now we have traditional and a white wedding. Both occasions are expensive. Thank you. There's a big business, a serious business in funerals. If you look at how today we are able to bury each other with just 50 people. I know people who take loans to have a funeral. This is also ignorance, where you look at our way today we have been able or we've been misled to believe that we have to be so commercial in simple rituals or simple way of our traditional behavior. It is to be costless. Yeah. We have young men and women on the African continent who will live in quote, who live in sin. Let me make it bluntly. Yeah. In the in the Christian space. Okay. Where they can actually live with each other because they don't have enough money 
to pay for the 150,000 for the venue where they can get married. Yeah. The ring on its own goes for 25, 50,000 and etc. Right. And the poor young men will be wait, waiting on the on the on, on the shadows that I don't know when I'll acquire and uh, co collect so much resources so that I can just do this process and get it done with. Mm. At the end of the day, you you actually develop a certain amount of an audience that is thriving to achieve the white supremacy, the white wedding. Listen, to, listen to even the language. Yeah. The white wedding. Yes. And I threw it the other day. Is a white wedding not white tradition? Why do we find it easy to put a distinction yeah. between a white wedding and a traditional wedding? And, and uh, one of the things we're missing here too, and, and we should admit, even in a Christian environment, uh, Paul, in talking to the Roman church, said, custom to whom custom. Mm. So there was never a time in the scriptural presentation or expression of scripture where they disallowed the custom that each person had within the Christian faith. The dominant culture has always used religion and everything else wow. to make its case and to prove its point. The problem we have is the leaders we have, particularly the leaders we have who need the masses in order to become whatever they become from a financial point of view. And I'm talking from the church. I'm talking from a secular political environment. I'm talking about people who had no power except the power of the people to put them in a position where they can influence policy and change dispositions and attitudes. But because they have striven so long to be achievers and to get to that place where they're accepted, because understand this, in America, as well as in Africa and all over the world, right. you've got to understand that it's dominated by a very few group of people who are in fellowship one with the other, who are in conjunction one with the other and who corroborate each other, no matter what the nations are. I was reading, I was reading years ago when uh, one of your presidents said something about black people being used only, I think it was Buta, or, uh, I can't remember his name exactly, but he was talking about just black people being ignorant and being used by white people for whatever they choose to use them for. And he happened to be one good friend to President Reagan at the time. Mm. So the, the, this good old boy system is not only in one country, but it's national. It's international, actually, where you've got a group of people who control everybody else. The problem we have is that our leaders are so glad to get to a place where they can rub shoulders with politicians and presidents and rub shoulders with the people who are supposed to be significant in the community. Right. And after 100, 200, 300 years, that's all they have in mind. The second thing is, that leadership will not speak up for the benefit of the masses and will not get down into the trenches with the masses mm. to improve their mm. lot as our lot is improved. Why? Because we have arrived. The second, third thing is that many people think that it is so pervasive, the problem, that when they get somewhere, if they were to say anything and jeopardize where they are, then they would lose and it would only be a drop in the bucket. The fourth thing is that sometimes you stand up for people who don't want to stand up for themselves. Ooh. So there's multiple facet situation that yes, we got to deal with. But our leaders have got to first understand the situation of the past, understand where we are presently and begin to go into the future. And much of that calls for self-sacrifice, long suffering yes, and gentleness to the people who don't have it. Our people die from a lack of knowledge. Bishop, and that is the truth. Now you spoke about leadership and this is where you need to help me Bishop because I like to believe that there's a majority of people out there who are willing to take these conversations as essential tools to form, to build a formation on how we regroup and create an ecosystem. I still believe that something bigger than JP Morgan, bigger than Bank of America, bigger than Wells Fargo, bigger than Standard Bank and FNB, it's coming. Let's take a scenario of VBS. We, what we know about VBS is what we read on the media. Mm. How credible is what we read and what is the editorial policy or editorial agenda mm. that impacts on the policy of that media? Mm. Not every newsroom is independent. Mm. Let's be clear about that. And the media has shaped our reality. Bishop, is it possible then for a new 
group of African thinkers to pioneer the space of trust in African leadership. Because we are in an era where your leadership is questioned before it's put to test. I know people who will say, what is Jones preaching today? Oh, I wonder what he's going to preach because I know he's preached all the sermons. You haven't even preached. You are in a position where you are test, you are scrutinized, you are crucified before you are put to test. And that can be also the root of black hate. We are our worst enemies sometimes. Let me just talk about South Africa for a minute. One yeah. of the things I noted, and I think that it's very important to, to bring it up, and that is that many times when, when the Mandela group, the group that was with Mandela, when they were all released and they became political movers, yes, you have to understand something, that after 25 or 30 years of being incarcerated, being treated uh, as less than with all of the brilliance that was locked up in that prison, when they come out and they become pol politicians and they get in a place of power, well, they feel like they're owed something. Mm. They, feel, they feel like, look, I gave up all of this. I gave up all this time. Now I'm in a place of power. I'm in a place where I can uh, dictate uh, policy. I can reach for certain things from an economic position. And it's easy now for the powers that be to say, OK, let's elevate them. Let's make them comfortable. Let's get them out of their place where they used to be. And of course, now they've been separated for 25, 30 years from the masses. Yeah. What has to happen now is the next generation that comes into power, they have to have history together, having trusted each other, having seen each other rise. So you're on your level. You shouldn't have a lot of haters. You should have a group of folk on your level who are now linking hand in hand with you to bring about a change for the masses in the future so that you bring the bottom up and not just take a group and take them up and leave everybody else. Noted. Noted. Hear you, Bishop. And I'm going to come back and ask Bishop yes. something on that. But, Bishop. I read a book that was written by a Kenyan author entitled Our Time to Eat. Oh. Our Time to Eat. Okay. This is a quotation that was found in the government offices when the liberation heroes were having a conversation around the, politi the political and the economic status of the country. Right. The man was extradited and is being hunted for as a fugitive in his own country for, re for revealing some of the heaviest corruption charges that are happening in the country in terms of tenders and etc. But mm. the tagline there, our time, time to, to eat. eat. And what the bishop is saying yeah. is when people have a spirit of entitlement. Okay. As long as we are being managed by the Romans and the Dutch in our own democracy, we are swapping hyenas with foxes mm. because we are moving someone into power not to change the system, okay, but to maintain it. He gets there so that he can keep the system and as much as possible maintain that is the, what is there so that the rand will not go down. The dollar will not go down. Right. Play the ball well. Then during your reign, it was said that you maintained law, order, and peace. Remove the artificial academic and economic policies that are entrenched in the education and teach our children to own what Bishop is saying, to trust each other. We struggle with trusting ourselves. The, the question is, it, it is not, Tibos, it is not a walk, wake up in the morning table yeah. and you look at me right now and you can trust Maponga J. Okay. The software on which you are running with mm. in your internal system yes. does not get washed away by two little three words that you can meet up in a conversation and say, now I'm going to trust a black man. Mm. It, it goes deep. It goes deep. Right now, if a ma white man stands there, he yeah. says, bring your money to me, I'll invest it for you. And the black man stands there and says, bring money, I will invest it for you. The black man most likely you look from his shoe to his socks. To the car he's driving. To, to the car he's driving, check his phone, size him up, his haircut, and even make a few phone calls. Do you know this guy? Right. Do you know this guy? Right. You will not do a background check on a white man. How do we get rid of that cancer? Bishop, how do we fight and confront that cancer of black on black hate? This conversation happened in the 80s. I mean, I heard it in the 90s. I could engage in the, in, in the early 20s. I'm now asking the question in 2020. Is it possible for Africans to trust each other? I grew up in an era where if you said there's a crusade and Reynard Bonke is coming to the Val, stadiums are packed. Mm. When you have Bishop Matebula mm. from Pumalang 
a man of God who I, I, I've seen him do wonders. I've seen, I mean, I'm just saying he's on the same similar caliber. Mm. He's in a tent. The software, you spoke about the mind as a software. I like that. Our operating system, is it even prepared to be repaired or do we need to re-engineer? Let me make it blunt for you. Very bluntable so that you can swallow yes. this nicely. Yeah. Uh, it will be bitter. It will be get stuck on your throat. Okay. That black achievers, to date, they still find it much better to go and take all their resources and their support in a white community and in a white pastor, in a white church. You ask them why. Mm. Black pastors, too much drama. They just hmm. want this space where they... So even as much as they support you outside, right. when it comes to the tire meeting the road, that can a black man successful take his money and put it behind a black pastor so that the black man can move away from the tent into the stadium. You'll be shocked that when Renard Bonke is coming to South Africa, mm. black business people Donate. will put their money and etc. on him yeah. and call him for dinner for a prayer and etc. They will not be able to do that with the, with, the, with the black man. Somewhere, somehow, there is something, we, we cannot lie, commercialization and advertising of a white supremacy picture runs deep even into our own economics, that we cannot trust our black products through and through, from spirituality to economics to politics. I like that. From spirituality, economics... And in politics, Bishop, you have the but same you scenario. See, at, the, at the end of the day, when 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 I consider that, and and just just piggybacking on the bishop, when you understand that from a theological position, we have had the dominant culture use theology to bring us into conformity to whatever it is they chose. Okay, but we turned around and took the same theology and survived the onslaught of their attitude through theology, we yes, took sir. the same Bible and survived through it. The problem that we have is that in order for them to conquer, they had to divide. And I want you to consider that we're dealing now with hundreds of years. We're dealing with centuries of this kind of behavior and this kind of treatment. And then finally, we are released. We're released, pol released politically, but we're not released financially. Yes, sir. And we're still striving and grabbing and reaching, trying to get to that place of comfort and trying to get that place of wealth. But oftentimes, for those of us who are pastors, those of us who are politicians, whose position is predicated on the position of the people, we should not, as my bishop has eloquently said, we should not be in office to maintain the status quo. Why is it that African leaders in general abuse the people who are mm. under them, leaving the country with billions and billions of dollars of rand or whatever your currency is? The reason is simple. Yes. When you have been abused as a child, the only thing you know to do is abuse oh, as a parent. The world for its future needs people like you, people on your level, people with your voice at your age yeah. to begin to speak out and reach out and grab everybody in your space who is positive, uplifting, who cares about the populace, and you all put an army together and change what we're dealing with. Can I, can I preach a little bit, Bishop? Go ahead. Preach, Bishop. Can I preach, Bishop? Yes, sir. Let, preach. Me, let me open the door, you know. Please do. You read the story of Gideon, mm. the man who had so many thousands of men coming in for battle. Yes, sir. And the Lord says there are too many. Mm. Please, those who have just married, go back home. Okay. And right, and right. He said, see, there are too many, please. Yes, yes. Take them to the river. Mm. Let them drink water. Okay. And I want you to stand on the side and watch them. Yes, sir. And there you get to the riverbed. And there's a group of soldiers who take all their weapons and their spears and shields mm. and they put them on the floor. All right. They lie down on the banks of the river, dip their faces into the water, and they start drinking. Right. And there's another group yet, hold on their swords and shields on one side, and with one hand, they were leaping water into their mouths. Okay. And the Lord said, all those who have not put down their weapons. Yes, sir. While they are drinking. Yes, sir. Note, Ooh, there's a group that Preaches. put down its swords. Yes. When they are now drinking. Okay. On the waters of colonialism and enjoying the benefits. Yes, sir. They even forget that they are the battlefront. Ooh. But there's that group that even at the moment of resources. Yes, sir. They still remember we are at war. All right. And we will not put down our swords, even in the midst of abundance. Preach it. Take those few, please. Mm. Only 300 men remained. 
Here's the strategy of war okay. for the black people. Okay. Position them around the enemy. Positioning. Yes, what sir. am I talking about? Let the academicians hold their candles and their calabashes and their trumpets. Let the politicians do the same. Let the economists do the same. Let all spheres of academic policy, culture, stand in their position. Mm. And at a given time, we needed one voice. Where in all professions around this colonial monster, okay. we can blow our horn at the same time. Right now on the spiritual, say, we are, spiritual side, we are saying it is not right yes. that we can collect people from where they are and give them a fake form of religion which does not change their lives. So we've put down our sword. We need the politician also to stand up and say, this system is not working. The education men must stand and say, this system is not working. The health men must stand up and say, this system is not working. But the danger we have right now is isolation. The death of Malcolm X, the death of Martin Luther, the death of Steve Biko. And all these people die in the hands of fellow blacks who become pimps on behalf of the liberation struggle. <laughs> My goodness. Ooh. Bishop, you got you to gotta, you gotta pause right there. Because you are saying we got invited to the table and forgot that we are, we are actually at war. Bishop, you have uh, Congresswoman Maxine Water in your church. She has publicly opposed Trump. Why are people like our Maxine Waters, Bishop, only become prominent when they have to criticize a current leadership? But what are we doing apart from criticizing? Are we creating programs? extramural activities, some kind of away, awareness uh, 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 or, or development of shaping of the mind so that a grade five child can hear directly from the legacy of Oprah how best it is to position yourself for leadership economically, politically, and all other spheres. Mm -hmm. Are we good when we stand and criticize or are we good to stand when we build? You see, the thing that is very important is to know who you are, to know what you need, to get to where you want to go. The problem that we have again is this narcissistic, egomaniacal disposition that most people have when it centers around money. Anytime you have a group of people in church, particularly those of us who lead the spiritual front, and, and I believe that the spiritual aspect of the individual ought to control every other aspect of his operation, his or her True. operation, mm -hmm. attitude and disposition. I agree. I think spirituality should come first. Yeah. And the spirituality now is an interpretation of what is before us. In our case, it's the Christian book, the Bible. And we have too much subjective interpretation that is based on the intention of the individual who is presenting. When you have intent, what follows intent is content. Hmm. You show me your intent and I'll tell you what your content is. If your intent is for the masses and for blessing people around you, then that's what you will use your wealth to do. That's what you will use your influence to do. And I'll tell you this, all great influencers aren't great leaders. The Bible says that in the last day, there would be a storge, and that would be a alpha, it's negative, storge, uh, affection. Yes. So man would be without natural affection. Ooh. The bottom line here is that people don't care about each other. Oh. Not about black, white, just that people in general don't care about each other. Okay. My blessing, when the Bible says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. All right. When I look at where I want to go with my children, if I love you as I love myself, I want your children to go where mm. I go. Right. What I want for myself, I need to want for you. And that brings me from one to community. We need to understand that everybody is significant and we don't climb on top of other Ooh. people in order to get to where we want to go. We want to bring people with us. We have let people down. And because we've let them down, they see the selfishness 
that we have exhibited with the influence we have from a spiritual platform and we've made all of the spiritual inroads carnal. What we need to do is combine our spirituality with our education, with our zeal and desire to see people better, put it all together, and then I be- people will start trusting each other. Preachers don't trust preachers. Bishop, you, you, I'm going to ask you to help me with this one. You once preached in your closing. You said it's important to be good to your children's friends. Bishop was making an analogy. He says the reason why um, he's good to his children's friends, why they need to taste some goodness. You find some kids who come to your house who have never experienced love Mm. and goodness from Mm. where they're from. Mm. So when you express goodness to people that you don't even know or to Mm. children that you don't even, that are not your own, Mm. you're giving them a shot of what goodness is. Mm. And Bishop said something, he said, because one day, Mm. the very same kids, why we have to treat them with such goodness, they're going to marry your own kids. Come on, Bishop. And you don't want to spend 20 years of investing in somebody who's Mm. a powerhouse to commit to something that is a serial, bitter, Mm. uh, abusive individual who's never had a shot of being good or kind. Mm. So when we express goodness to other people that we have no... ROIs, mm. no motive, nothing to gain from. It's because they need, they will end up with what you've been good to all your life. On behalf of the pastoral work. Yes. On behalf of the clergy. Yes. On behalf of the ministers. And in my capacity as a bishop. Yes. I would want to put it on record and put it on air. Yes. To apologize to the greater congregation out there. Mm. For amongst us, some wolves have been here. Okay. Amongst us, false prophecies have been given. Yes. Amongst us, monies have been extort have been extorted out of us. Okay. And some amongst us, amongst our own ministers, yes, have abused the community. I lose nothing to stand up and publicly apologize for fake miracles. Yes. Publicly apologize for fake. The Lord has said. Okay. The Lord has said. Okay. When we know for sure, mm. the Lord never said nothing. Okay. And I must publicly apologize again for some amongst us who have wrongfully taken the word of God and used it and abused it right. for their own benefit. Having said that, however, yes. I want to challenge even the greater membership yes. that it is critical that we run away from this schizophrenic ideology of using the Bible only when it is relevant. Okay. Then we find ourselves migrating between truth and error. What am I talking about? Yeah. Had we believed in the Bible in the first place, okay. we should have settled the land issue. We Had should we, have settled the land the issue. The Bible is clear about land. That was our second Had we believed topic. in the land, in, okay. in the Bible, in its honesty, yes. we would have settled the issue of wealth creation. For the Bible is clear on how to create wealth. Okay. If we really say that the Christian principles are what we must drive our community uh, agenda on, right. are we going to be faithful to implement those same principles in terms of, I am my brother's keeper? Ooh. All pastors and preachers have to repent first. Why? No. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. Yes, Bishop. The, the G- Jesus asked this question. He said, when the Son of Man come, shall he find, Will he find faith, faith on earth? He, he, that's what he asked in, in, the, in, the, in the section where he was dealing with the judge who was being bombarded by the lady who needed him to the judge to avenge her. Yes, sir. And, and the final, to, to stay contextual so it's not subjective, Jesus is saying that Heavenly Father is going to be much quicker than this judge to avenge his children. Even though his children give him a lot of problems, he still will avenge them of their enemy. That's right. Faith is belief. So how can they believe except they They've hear? Not heard. And how can they hear without a preacher? What we have done is we have kept even the people we preach to ignorant of the principles that mm. will make them somebody mm. themselves yes, because sir. we want to keep them subservient to us. My, my. That's oh. our problem. My, and my. And we God. need a generation that is free from the financial entanglement that we have, the lack of education that we have, couldn't get a job anywhere, couldn't work anywhere, so we get called to preach. 
Bishop. This one is nice. This one. Go is, ahead. This, this one is too nice, Bishop. I can't let you go. I can't let you go on this one. Until in my old age now, I go back to the scripture and I find a passage that says, I have come to set the captives free. Okay? Free. And I said, free from what? Because it looks like I'm walking away from captivity, from colonialism, into captivity of a different... Now I'm supposed to be captive to the church, apparently. Okay. The, the, I, what I, is this captive that you, you, you're struggling with ascertaining? Is that the question? I mean, all along I thought that freedom. Yes. Freedom meant that I'm, I'm now able to walk freely on the market. Right. And I'm now free to share toilets yeah. with white people. Yeah. I'm now free to share the beach and etc. And I discovered after this freedom that it's artificial freedom. The real freedom yes. is found in me having access to resources. And when I have access to resources, I am free to make choices. Yeah. I don't need to live in Soweto and live in the slums and live in the law community because that's all I can afford. Because money gives you choices. Yeah. Take note. Please, sir. Many of our members are members because they are poor. Hey. They are waiting for a breakthrough. Okay. Lord help me. And hold, Lord help me. Don't start me. war now. Yes, the sir. day when your members have 10 million each. Yes. I want to find out how many of them would be sitting in the pews okay. and say, I still want to worship and I want this man to minister to me. Yay. I bet you Yay. a good percentage of them will be in Hawaii on their way to Mauritius. Sorry, I missed <laughs> up my flights. I'll be catching up with you next week, Yay. if not the other month. Yay. Because money gives you options. choices. Yes. And options. And by the way, let me speak softly again. That's what it does. Let me speak softly again. Yes, when sir. some of us have money, they'll change their houses, they'll change their cars, and change their wives in that order. Poverty does not give you choices. Are you saying that some of us are in relationship, and I'm sorry, ladies, don't take offense. Some of us are in relationship that we are in because That's of what, what we, can, we afford. can afford. That's what we can afford. <laughs> and even the ladies. No, no, let me finish. That, the other day I was looking no, on Twitter, no, and one woman this. had every, all the tools outside. Yeah. And she said, I don't have a man right now. Yeah. Because they can't afford this. Mm. And she, she had her fingers pointing to, I will, not, I will not explain more. But then people started describing her anatomy that, oh, well, you say they can't afford this. Yeah. Can you afford that? I thought, wow. That oh, was... I saw that picture. <laughs> I saw that picture. I saw that picture. But the point I was going, where, where I was going is that, Bishop, I remember having, I think we had dinner. Uh, I don't know where we were. We were probably at the Beverly Hills. Uh, it was one of those late Sunday nights. And you said something and it blew me for weeks. Why do you think you can attract what you can't keep? Come on. Isn't it the reason why when we start having money, and this happens in America with our own brothers, mm -hmm. Tiger Woods, white wife, mm. we gravitate to anything that doesn't look like us as affirmation that we've made it. Mm. Why? Again, it is this, it is this, this inordinate desire to be leading culture. It's this inordinate desire. Mm. Not to understand that you can bring a whole people up, you bring yourself up, but then you want to hobnob with the people who now turn out to be in your circle. You have to understand this. On a certain level of income, a certain level of association, yes. based upon where you are intellectually, financially, you end up around a certain group of people. It is not likely my granddaughter is going to Yale. Now, my granddaughter will become just as much of the establishment as anybody can be when she walks out of Yale. She might be black on the outside, but she's going to be everything that education gives her on the inside. That's All why right. when Obama became president, people were seeing black, black, black. I wasn't seeing black, black, black. I was seeing Harvard. I was seeing mm. the editor of the law review. Mm. I was seeing he was just as American as anybody else from an integration point of view. Mm. Blackness didn't matter. It is incumbent upon us to bring our brothers and sisters along with us with the proper direction, putting our money back into education, dealing with the system in such a manner that instead of departmentalizing our brothers, we bring everybody together collectively. Why should I look to the white man to solve my problem when he brought me over here as a slave? We came from slavery, from agriculture oh, hey, to industrialization. Down 
from industrialization, we went to automation, from automation to microtechnology, and yes. each one needs greater education. Yes. So because we're not educated, we obviously now cannot operate in microtechnology when we were bought here for agriculture. So Man. now what are we good for now? We're good for filling the prisons. So they make money on us on the negative side Bishop. because our leaders ignore the fact that we have a responsibility to bring the people up to a greater level. And ooh, that's ooh, what we ooh. need. Check. Mate, Whoa. Bishop, I have no words. Mm. Checkmate. And I want the people that are joining this conversation, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when you go to THD24.com, you need to be part of this because we're going to be putting a section where you can comment. People are struggling. You got somebody in your family right now who you know is gifted, but is serving seven years, 15 years, 25 years over some, you know, uh, uh, petty crime. Uh, some petty crime. Mm. And I think it's just the mind, not the mind was not aligned at that time. Mm. Mm. And I'm not justifying crime but there's a reason why that worldwide where there's a population of black whether they are minority or majority prisons are filled mm. and majority of those people in prisons are black you may want another program altogether to get to harvest some of my thoughts around the prison concept which in south africa for example they call it correctional services yes but there's yeah, nothing correctional correct. about those prisons because right now if i should steal two million from you yes i can go to my garden and dig it in I'll be locked up in prison right. for a few days, I, out of good behavior. I could be up out of it in one and a half years mm -hmm. or two years. Sure. I come back and I dig up my money and I continue. Sure. It's a savings plan because there's no form of correction Rehabilitation. that happens. Or even me allowing you to access back your resources. I want to take that and I want to ask Bishop, because we got three minutes, literally. Bishop, if we were to pave a way of restoration, if we were to pave a way of recovery, to a point where we all identify our epicenter and say, let's go back to that nucleus and start reconstructing my identity, the education system around me, whatever form of influence is in society. How do I recalibrate and get back to that point? Let every black person out there yeah. go back and find out how important it is to cut trees with a blunt X than to cut trees with a sharp X. Specialize in your skills. Mm. Improve on what you can do and do it better and do it best. Mm. Begin to zero in into the areas of your strength. Mm. And when you become good at what you are doing, yes, sir. someone is willing to pay for those services. For every voice, there's an invoice. <laughs> <laughs> for every voice, there's an invoice. Jones, over to you, sir. I, I, I have to corrupt. I, I corroborate the bishop from a, from a biblical standpoint. The gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Hallelujah. If you want to know your calling, check your gifts. Because mm. God wow. will not call you to something he did not gift you to do. For us to identify the strength of the next generation. I'm talking to you now. Yes, because sir. we're at an age now where all we can give you is wisdom. That's and right. you take the wisdom and operate in wisdom that is ancient. Take the ancient, yes, the sage, and you operate and put your legs and your arms and put your energy behind the wisdom we're giving you. Don't forget your roots. Operate for the benefit of your people. My it's bishop. on you now, touch. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are passing the baton to you and hey. your contemporary. Blessings to you, my lord. That seals the deal. Blessings I'm to bishop, you, my bishop. I, I, I you. would not have said it better because somewhere, somewhere we needed to find where the arm meets the elbow. Ladies and gentlemen, you That's heard it. it. Bishop. Go and identify those areas. You've heard it from Bishop Noel Jones. You've heard it from Bishop Maponga. It's very important that you don't just take this as a conversation. This gives you the coordinates to that place yes, where sir. we need to be. And please, please, please subscribe to... The app that we have, Noel we'll, Jones we'll Ministries, some from that. Yep, app, please get and uh, also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yes, uh, Bishop Noel Jones. Bishop's accurate account is Bishop Noel Jones Global. Please, that's the Instagram, the YouTube as well. City of Refuge is on both end, is on Android and Apple. So get on App Store, download the app, mm -hmm. and you can listen uh, to this conversation. Part of the recordings are already available on THD24.com. 
I want to say good night to you and good afternoon to our community in Los Angeles. May God continue to bless you. www.thd24.com. My name is Tibo Touch from Bishop Noel Jones in LA and my big bishop here, Bishop Maponga. Blessings, my Lord. Blessings. God, God bless. <laughs>